What's happening there, Reject Nation? Greg and John here today. Saw a request for this. Decided to kill some time. Our internet. Spectrum. You guys suck, Spectrum. <laughs> Can't tell you how awful Spectrum internet is, specifically in my uh, the Hawkeye reaction. Been, been, been uploading for, for a very, very long time. I had to call them. I think the 15th visit this year, they're sending someone here for the same. There's a signal problem. We gotta fix it. So at 5.30 in the morning, we're like, let's shoot this pitch meeting reaction then. <laughs> yeah, we're slap happiest. Let's do it, guys. You know it's going to be good. It's going to be a great stress relief. The joy of Ryan George. So, you have a Spider-Man sequel for me? Yes, sir, I do. The third entry in the, I guess, home trilogy. Yeah, it seems like we decided that was a thing at a certain point. So what happens in this movie? <laughs> well, Peter is super famous because Mysterio revealed his identity in the last movie, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so his world's turned upside down. The media's all over him and his friends. That Flash guy writes a whole book about it. Oh, boy. And there are also some legal troubles involved. So they, get this, they get Matt Murdock in. Charlie Cox. He's from the Netflix show. Yeah, he is. <laughs> oh boy, it doesn't get much crazier than that. <laughs> oh, you have no idea. <laughs> that's oh, that's really right. no, I have idea. No, because sir, check this out. I was thinking we get Andrew Garfield to come in as Spider-Man from another universe. Oh, yeah, I mean, he's great. Okay, I was expecting a bigger Aww. reaction than that. But also, we get Tobey Maguire in as Spider-Man 2. Good actor, sure. <laughs> Sir, Tobey Maguire. I did love Seabiscuit, that was great. <laughs> Seabiscuit is tight. Sir, they My both back. played Spider-Man before. Oh, did they? Yeah, in other movies, they... Oh, I don't... I guess I missed those. I... <laughs> really? I mean, I have no recollection, but the movie will still work, right? I... Uh... I guess. Okay, great. So let's hear it. I, uh, okay. Uh, I mean, I was hoping we could get Alfred Molina to come in as Doc Ock. Oh, he was fantastic in Chocolat. Okay. <laughs> no, you know what, I'm going to five Spider-Man movies real quick, Good okay? Oh, really? Yeah, the impact. None of this is going to land the way I wanted to if you haven't watched those five movies. Five movies. Okay. All right. Please, it's, <laughs> you got to do it. You got to do it. Okay. Yeah. That is so funny. <laughs> like, he's just totally subverted the expectation of what you think he would do for a pitch meeting in that moment. We kind of touched on this in our spoiler review. How if they didn't show any of that, of villains especially, because Sony's plan originally, like the head of Sony was doing an interview with Los Angeles Times, and they were right next to us when we were at the premiere. They were saying, like, originally we didn't want to show any of the villains or even let the public know. But, uh, you know, things started getting leaked, so we decided to start showing them. But when I heard that, I was like, but I feel like that should have always been the plan a little bit, right? Because what if the fan base hadn't seen those <laughs> yet? What if you had a large portion of the audience like, where are they from? <laughs> yeah, you know? just clue you in that you need to do your homework if you haven't already. <laughs> I mean, even for people who have seen them, a lot of them felt like it was necessary for them to rewatch them in order to go into that. So, yeah, I just thought that was like, a, that, was, that, was, that was a little poignant in my opinion. <laughs> so, what did you think? Yeah, you know, I mean, some of that was great. What was that whole <laughs> jazz thing about, though? Oh, we don't need to talk about that. Okay, now listen <laughs> to this. I'm thinking we get Willem Dafoe back as Green Goblin. Oh, he's from the first movie. Oh, there's the reaction I'm going for. Yeah. I was also thinking we get Thomas Hayden Church back as Sandman and Reese Ifans back as Lizard. Well, he's from the third movie, and he's from the first movie of the rebooted movies. <laughs> That's right, and also Jamie Foxx as Electro. He's from the second movie of the rebooted movies. He sure is, sir. They're all all from the other movies. Amazing. Hey, what about James Franco? Should we get him back? Eh. Dane DeHaan? Meh. Well, okay then. So what happened? <laughs> no Harry's. Well, okay, so it turns out that being the most famous person in the world has kind of ruined Peter and MJ and Ned's chances of getting into MIT. Oh, okay. And so Peter feels bad, so he goes to see Doctor Strange to ask him to cast a spell to make everybody forget he's Spider-Man. And how does that go? Oh, not well, sir. See, he starts the spell, but then Peter keeps asking for little changes to it, like he wants MJ to remember him. So Doctor Strange takes a minute to just talk it through. No, 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 no. God, no. <laughs> Why not? So the movie can happen. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah. So the spell gets messed up, and then people from other universes that know that Peter Parker is Spider-Man start popping into this universe. Wait, did Electro know that Peter Parker was Spider-Man? No, he didn't. So, 
Okay. So eventually, Peter's going to capture <laughs> all these look over that. and they're going to kind look of over recap that. each other's over a lot of things. To each other, a bunch of inside jokes for fans. <laughs> Very fun. And then Doctor Strange makes this box that'll send everybody back to their universes. Oh, great. But the thing is, they all got zapped over here pretty much right before they died. So Peter's like, well, we have to help them. We can't just send them to die. Oh. But Doctor Strange <laughs> says no, so Peter steals the box, and then Doctor Strange brings him into the mirror dimension, which he controls. Oh, man, it's going to be tough for Peter to beat Strange in there. Actually, it's going to be super easy. <laughs> Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, because see, you got math. math on oh, your math. Yeah, yeah, math. That works, kind of. <laughs> I love that because every time I've seen it, I'm like, I don't exactly know what math he's doing. I know he's saying geometry. I guess I kind of get it. It's, I don't really know geometry that well. It's math salad. <laughs> it's yeah. them going, hey, these are mathematical, these are geometric shapes, let's just have him say math and then fix the problem it's, really quick with another geometric yeah. shape. <laughs> because a lot of it is just, he's like spitballing so fast with a close-up on him and then close-ups on where the webs are landing. Yep. And then, oh, okay, he, he did something. And it looks cool. Yeah. <laughs> All right, <laughs> I roll with it every time. Science nerd. Because for all I know, they probably did it mathematically accurate, <laughs> and I'm the just too dumb to know if they did it accurate or not. The computers that built and simulated that effect sequence did a lot of math <laughs> to make that happen. <laughs> what else is going to happen? Well, there's kind of this consensus on the internet that everybody's tired of seeing Uncle Ben die in Spider-Man projects. That does seem to happen a lot. Yeah, so like I figured Batman's we don't parents. do that. Right, and instead we kill Aunt May. Oh my god. <laughs> Yeah, Green Goblin's gonna blow her up, and right before she dies, she's gonna tell Peter, you know, with great power must also come great responsibility. Mm, yeah, that lesson just doesn't carry the same weight without one of your parents' siblings violently dying. Very true, sir. So anyway, then Ned is gonna use Doctor Strange's <laughs> sling ring to try and open a portal to get Peter. And that's a thing he can do? Yeah, we're gonna throw in a line about him having magic in his family, so he can do portals now. Wow, okay, so we're just kind of crapping on Doctor Strange's abilities in this movie a little bit, huh? <laughs> Huh. A little, yeah. Well, okay then. <laughs> it did take Doctor Strange a while to figure that out. Huh? Yeah, Doctor Strange does kind of get nerfed a little bit in this movie. If you thought Doctor Strange's origin story was a little bit rushed in how he got so good at his abilities so quick, wait till you see Ned's. <laughs> Magic just runs easily for all these people. Once you know you have it, you can do it pretty much instantly. So then these portals open, and that's how these other Peter Parkers come in, the ones played by Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield. Oh, wow, wow, wow. Wow. Yeah, it's gonna be very nostalgic, sir. So I guess they each get like a cameo line, like a little jokey thing. Oh, no, they're like in the movie now. Oh, they are? Yeah, full-on characters with effects on the plot and everything. Okay, well, that's not usually how these things go. Yeah, no, well, see, this movie's kind of a love letter to the Spider-Man movies and their fans. Aw, that's nice. I like that. Yeah, a massively lucrative showcase of our intellectual property. Yeah, okay, the first thing you said <laughs> sounded a lot more romantic, though. Cashing in on nostalgia, but done right. You had it the first time. Oh, okay, got Gotcha. So does Ned keep making portals? No, he stops at two. <laughs> I mean, why not keep trying? They could get Tom Holland. They could see how many Spider-Mans they can get. The scene has served its purpose, sir. We gotta move on. <laughs> uh, okay. So anyway, then eventually all the spider guys are gonna get together and do some science to make cures for the bad guys. Very cool. And then there's gonna be this big fight where they try to cure them all. Amazing. Man, it's gonna be a little hard to keep track of which Spider-Man's which during the big fight, huh? Actually, yeah, a little. All right. And so eventually Tom Holland is so mad that he's about to kill Green Goblin. Oh boy. But Tobey Maguire steps in and stops him using nothing but his wise face. And then he gets stabbed. <laughs> oh no, is he okay? Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he's all right. <laughs> all right. It was kind of rude of you emotionally, you know. Well, so none of their spidey senses went off when he was about to get stabbed? No, because they were having a moment. Spidey senses don't work if you're having a moment. Oh, good to know. <laughs> Yeah, you know, regarding that Toby moment, as much of a shocker as it is the first time, because it really does play on your feelings of, oh no, are they going to kill off Toby Maguire? Like, I remember being like upset at the movie the first time I watched it, thinking they were actually going to do that. Um, but yeah, every time I rewatch it, I do have that thought of, how come he didn't sense it? Okay. And I do think there is a little bit of a weird beat, just in kind of terms of the editing, when he is just like, yeah, I haven't stabbed before. Like, oh, I guess there was no... 
No There's no terrible. stakes at all. <laughs> There's nothing to worry about at that no. moment. <laughs> yeah, he's not concerned. Nobody's concerned. They, didn't, they we didn't were re- concerned wrongfully. They didn't have to check on him or something like that, you know? He yeah, was just they like, no, I that before. It's fine. Yeah. So then it looks like all these other people are about to come in from other dimensions. It's about to be nuts. Oh, no. So Tom Holland, Peter, has Dr. Strange cast a new spell where everybody forgets about Peter Parker entirely. Oh, very selfless. It is. So then all the villains get sent back to their universes, all cured and whatnot. Are they being sent back to just a second before they're killed? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> so anyway, then it's all very sad for Tom Holland's Spider-Man because MJ and Ned don't remember him. Oh, that's sad. Yeah, and he's about to go explain the whole situation to them, but then he realizes they're probably better off without him in their lives. Very sad. It is, yeah. So he's got to get an apartment all by himself and start over. So he still has, like, a social security number, like the government still remembers him. Ah. Uh, credit. Maybe. What happens with all the videos and news reports about him being Spider-Man? I guess the the memory spell works on computer memory also. What about Flash's book that he wrote? Okay, look, sir, I'm gonna need you to get all the way off my back about this memory spell, okay? We're going for a clean slate kind of thing here. Oh, okay, let me get off of that thing. Thanks, so what do you think? Oh, it sounds like a really good time, you know? I'm just, how are we gonna market this without spoiling all this crazy stuff? Uh... Leaks? Oh, leaks, yeah, that'll work, let's do that. <laughs> oh, God. Awesome. Yeah, you guys gotta subscribe to Ryan George's personal YouTube channel as well as Screen Rant, mainly for the pitch meetings. That's the main reason I want to subscribe to pitches is Screen Rant these days. Yeah, man, the leaks were the best marketing ever. <laughs> best marketing ever. Now it's time to figure out how many of them were intentional. <laughs> oh, man. I wonder if John Campy wasn't on anything. Well, that was fun. That was fun. But I gotta say, you know, I feel like Ryan George kind of held back a little bit on this one. I do gotta say, I feel like he, uh, there was something, especially with the producer character. I mean, it was really funny at first. But then it seemed like he really didn't seem to care as much. And there's a lot of things about the villains that we've heard a lot of people sort of criticize that I thought he would kind of go into. I guess you know. that's the thing. Yeah, I feel like this going in, I expected this to be like a litany of all the, you know, plot holes and, and weird details that are there that we all lovingly look past for the qualities that the movie obviously yeah. has. But yeah, it feels like a lot of those were kind of left. Like, I really appreciated the whole subversion at the beginning with the producer. But yeah, it does feel like there are a lot of stones maybe left unturned. Yeah, like I thought he might talk about like Lizard being a little more one dimensional. <laughs> Or like Sam Antle and Sand the whole time and the shot at them at the end or Electra. Like, cause he normally takes like the, the common criticisms you're hearing and then really amplifies them and makes them even like yeah, makes more them. outstanding. Or maybe he thought that'd be too expected and decided to subvert our expectations by not calling them out or he flat out didn't have a problem with <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I mean, maybe he just thought it was a lot more uh, smooth and streamlined than yeah, some yeah. other people. Yeah. Or maybe he's a really busy guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> he just didn't have time to do a 20 minute pitch meeting in this movie. <laughs> All right, guys. Either way, that was still really fun. And a lot of these jokes really made us crack up. Guys, check him out. And hey, hopefully, Hawkeye's uploaded <laughs> now. <laughs>